Hi pals, welcome back to the Lens Pal TV episode 2 of what's new and what's coming. The first thing we're going to talk to you about today, pals, is um, in the last episode, if you remember, if you watched it, um, people were asking for more powerful strobes. Um, we did listen and we did get one in. And uh, what we got in was the Paul C. Bluff uh, 800 watt link. Yep, so here it is. This is the link. As Liz mentioned, it is an 800 watt strobe, but it also doubles as about a 300 watt continuous light as well. This is an incredibly bright, powerful light in what is honestly a, a smaller package than we were expecting it to be considering how powerful it actually is. Um, and it it's fantastic. We've already had a couple of people take it and produce some amazing images with it, but we're always always excited to see what you guys are going to produce with the equipment that you rent so yeah this is on our site right now we also have the hub for canon for it as well nikon shooters speak up if you are interested in using this let us know and we'll get in the hub for you sony users don't worry the hub for sony is in development and should be released later this year hopefully by the end of summer so yeah that's it. this is this is the link 800 it it absolutely answers all of the questions about needing more powerful strobes so for sure yeah. for sure and if you want to just come and see it and try it you're very welcome just come into uh, winter garden we'll get it out and you can have a little play because it really is worth looking at uh, the next thing um, we've got in is these little things here the pod mics um, we were asked for extras because we've got the pod but podcaster pro so um, what we did was went and got these in and um, we're using them today uh, you don't necessarily have to use it with that but John's going to tell you what else you can use it with yeah absolutely so as Liz said we got these in um, originally we got two in to include with mm -hmm. the roadcaster pro 2 and um, being that that is a four person audio kit you know you can use you can use any mics you like with it uh, as long as it you know has an XLR input like these mics do, but we did we do know that some of you want the same mics across the board, so we we got in extra mics. They come with you know pretty much what you're seeing here: the XLR cable, the the stand. Um, but as Liz mentioned, you don't have to just use these with the with the Rodecaster. We're using them now with the FX3. We're plugging into the the audio mic on the top but anything that you been using where you you want a nice great sounding um, microphone you know it's got nice clean sound to it so yeah it's anything that that requires that whether it's a, a podcast or a vodcast um, something like this for YouTube or uh, you know, doing interviews even, you could, I mean, I'd take the heavy weighty bass off of it, but you could definitely use it like this, couldn't absolutely. you? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It works perfectly. So yeah, so we've got, uh, we've got these in there. They come as individual ones, so if you want just one, then you just rent one. If you want more than one, then yeah, we've got your cup for that as well. So yeah. Again, um, we have it set up in the office in Winter Garden. If you want to come have a play, it's worth it because we can have some fun. The next thing is really what I think is really exciting. Um, we've done some price reductions on some of our absolutely fabulous kit. And um, the first thing is the Canon cinema lenses. We've got them in a 24, a 135 and an 85. Um, we decided, you know, everybody should be able to play with these. Everybody should be able to use them. So we reduced them to $99 for a four-day rental. It's an absolute steal of a price. Um, I probably shouldn't use that word because I don't want to put ideas in your guys' head. Please don't <laughs> steal these. Um, but again, I just don't think you can get these lenses for a better price. Certainly not locally. Maybe if you... Are willing to wait 17 days for shipping and, and probably pay more than the rental cost in shipping as well then oh, you might sure. find them at a cheaper price but for the most part like this is 
this is an um, unbeatable price. We've done price reductions on the Canon cinema lenses, the Rook and on Zines. Yes. The cinema cameras, so that's yeah, FX6, ESC200s. And 300s. And 300s. Yeah. Um, the, so you, the C200s, um, the C300 uh, and the FX6 are all 199 reduced it to 199 for a four day rental. It's, to me, that's incredible, but we want you to be able to use um, the more expensive equipment at, at a very cost-effective price. Yeah, I mean that's one of one of several benefits of renting is that you can save money. And now, for under three hundred dollars, you can get a, an FX six and and a lens, or a C three hundred and a lens for, like, say, under three hundred bucks. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's it's never been a better time to be a videographer absolutely and since we've done it uh, a lot of uh, videographers have been taking them out and having fantastic um, footage from it and they were really excited that at last that you know they were able to use it so it gives us pleasure to yeah able to do that um, the next thing is um, the firmware um, for the r5 um, firmware update and Johnny's going to tell you what that includes. Yeah, so recently Canon released a new firmware update. There was speculation a year ago that we'd see a new version of the R5 this year, but we're not going to get that. But what we did see is, like I say, this new firmware update and it introduced, you know, several bug fixes which firmware tends to do, but the big new feature that is included in this is the I'm going to call it the pixel shift technology, but I think Canon actually refers to it as something like the uh, IBIS high resolution mode. And what that essentially does is when you have that turned on and you hit the shutter release, it's going to take a whole bunch of images really quickly. It's a really quick process to take the images and then it stitches them all together in camera and you end up with a 400 megapixel image. Wow, that's amazing. So this was already a high resolution camera at 45 megapixels, give or take. Um, but yeah, this is this is actually incredible to use in that mode. Now there are some limitations. Obviously, if you're shooting sports, you're not going to be able to use that. The same goes for wildlife, because if your subject is moving between one frame and the next, even though it quickly takes those images, you are going to get motion blur and, and weirdness happening in your image, which maybe that's the desired effect that you're going for. But maybe. But for still life, for product photography, that kind of thing, landscapes, depending on how much wind there is, um, this is that high resolution mode is actually really impressive. That's great news for all you uh, Canon folks out there. And leading on from that, um, one of the most fabulous cameras we got in this year is the beautiful Fujifilm. Absolutely. It, I had to, I pestered and pestered and pestered Liz for, for I don't know how long, uh, a, a significant amount of time. And um, finally I was able to convince her that the Fujifilm GFX 100S was something that we should have on our shelf. And so this is a larger than full frame camera. Uh, it's a medium format camera. It has something like 70% extra sensor size. So if I actually pop this off here, that sensor is absolutely huge on this camera. And because it has a huge sensor, you got a lot of megapixels coming out of this as well. It's a 102 megapixel sensor wow. right there. That's without pixel shifting. So if you absolutely have to have a lot of detail, a lot of resolution in your images, and you cannot sit there whilst your subject scratches their nose or whatever it is they're doing, this is the camera for you because you are not going to get more megapixels out of a camera than you than you're gonna get out of this um, it's an absolutely fantastic system and we we've had it in for a little bit now mm -hmm. but you guys are 
just now starting to realize that we've got it in and starting to see the effects. If you come into our winter garden office, have a look at the big nighttime rocket launch that is on the wall. Have a look at how big that has been printed, how crisp and sharp the details on that image are. That was taken with the GFX 100S and yeah, it's blown up. I think it can actually be bigger than that as well. Oh yeah, it can, um, but um, you know. But it, you get up close to it, ask Dylan to move out of the way at his desk and uh, yeah, just really look at the detail on it. It's such a it's a beautiful image. Well beautiful. done, Gary Bogdan, if you're, if you're watching that, was who took the image. Um, but yeah, it is a perfect example of what this can do. So yeah, it's, uh, I'm excited to have this in. And I just want yeah. you guys out there to know that we've got it in and start thinking about what you're going to do with all that sensor. It was really worth all the pestering. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very, very, very um, great camera. Yeah, it's lovely. Right, the next thing is um, what's coming. Um, people are obviously moving over now in a big way to um, mirrorless and um, we just can't keep the stock in, so obviously we're, we're adding all the time. All the time. Um, 100, 500 people, you know, want that. We, we're adding more to that. We're adding um, more Sigma, the 2470s for Sony. They just fly out all the time um, because they're so crisp. It's, it's just the, the images are great that come out of them. So uh, that's a couple of things. Um, and the next thing that, that will be coming very soon, we're hoping in the next few weeks, is Nikon Z8. What a fabulous camera. I haven't heard anything about this camera list. Can you tell me about it? Who are Nikon? Do, who, who are they? Are they a camera manufacturer? I think so, yes. <laughs> Seriously, the <laughs> Nikon Z8 is, is an incredible piece of kit. Never before, I think, has a manufacturer taken their flagship camera, cut the bottom inch and a half off of it, and sold it. You know, usually yeah. you you see some kind of um, some features that aren't present on the non-flagship models, but the Z8 is, is it has everything. Everything. The, the only thing you're going to miss out from the Z8 to the Z9 is there's two things. One is battery life, so you're going to be about a hundred, I think maybe 110 images less than you would on the Z9 because the Z9 has a different battery. The upside of that is that the Z8 will take the batteries that you've been using in your D700, D850, uh, even your Z6, Z7 cameras, um, it will use those. So you probably already have uh, several of those kicking around. The other thing you're going to miss out on if you take a Z8 over a Z9 is the arm workout. It's a lighter camera, so you're not going to get, you're going to have to go to the gym instead of just lifting your camera. Um, <laughs> But it is it's absolutely incredible. Game changer. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, it, it's the it's the successor to the D850, which uh, I've said before uh, on this channel, is the D850 is probably one of the greatest DSLRs ever produced by any manufacturer. Um, and this is this is Nikon saying, hey, this is the mirrorless version of the D850. So you know. All of those people who, you know, two years ago, three years ago, were like, Nikon really needs to, to do something interesting, they have. They've done it. The Z9, the Z8, they are the cameras that are, are showing that, that Nikon is still taking their business, their core business seriously. Absolutely. It's great to see. Absolutely. Competition is, is great for everybody. Indeed, yeah. Um, we're just hoping that as soon as they, they say they're going to ship them on the 25th, but who knows um, how long it's going to take them to hit the stores so we can get them. But we'll definitely have it in stock, so keep an eye on the web. And that's it for this episode, pals. Good talking to you again. Um, until the next time, it's uh, goodbye from me. And goodbye from her. Ha <laughs>